My name is Kwabena Chenche Inubwati. Many thanks for joining us here on Newsdesk. To our very first story, this is and the owner of the boat that capsized at Yeji, leading to the deaths of about 16 people, has been arrested in the Bruno Afo region for negligence. Now, 16 people, as we are now told, have so far been reported dead after a boat carrying more than 70 people hit a stump and capsized at Yeji. Municipal Chief Executive for the area tells Joy News strict adherence to safety practices on the lake will be ensured in order to prevent a recurrence of such a disaster. We met this morning uh, to deliberate on the incident that happened on the Water Lake on Sunday. Uh, I think we, uh, we expressed uh, much uh, this thing uh, on the operations of uh, the, uh, some of the boat owners. We were very sorry for that which happened. Uh, when we met, we decided that the use of the, the, the life jacket has been ignored by many passengers and even the boat owners themselves. Some of them don't even don't have. And that is causing all these things. So we decided that from now going, the Navy should tighten their, their, their the security at the, at the shores there, at the loading point. They should make sure anybody who mounts a canoe is uh, in uh, 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 this day. Uh, in, it's in a life jacket and then overloading uh, we have seen that uh, the incident that happened yesterday you know, according to sources where a lot of people uh, they are number the, even the, the number uh, the canoe has to, to take uh, we have warned the Navy that in fact if we, if we experience such a thing again uh, an incident again they will be brought uh, they, they, they will be taken on. So, uh, in short, uh, we are going to make a meet all stakeholders uh, who operate on the, the lake. And then we talk, we bring out some basic laws to, for them to, uh, you know, uh, come uh, to, to obey so that uh, life and then at the, uh, at the lake, will be all that bearable. We talked on that issue. Uh, if I have money and I, I go and then buy my car and I say I'll turn it into a distance, I have to insure it. Even if it is my own private distance, I have to insure it. And uh, the same thing should apply to the boat owners who are, are doing, going commercial. They collect money from the people. Why is it that they are, their boats are not insured? And they involve in uh, accidents more than uh, this thing, even lorries. So we sat down and decided that they must be insured. Let's now get the latest on the ground. We can speak to a local reporter, Daniel Tetu, who joins us live now over the telephone with those details. So, Daniel, uh, good morning, and I uh, thank good you for morning. joining us your news. Now, can you tell us the update on this? Uh, we do know now that the owner of this boat has been arrested and uh, i mean why has he been arrested in the first place well you know on saturday's incident that happened on the lake we are all aware that 15 have been confirmed found now and they are all dead um if listeners can remember there was uh, this press statement uh, or he spoke to the media and he says the police if they can arrest him or he says the police to arrest him yesterday around 3 3 30 in the afternoon he's been arrested by the district police commander uh, in connection with the accident, because uh, according to the police commander, uh, it was out of his negligence because the boat that got uh, had accident belongs to him, and uh, the operator on board, according to the passengers who survived the accident, said uh, it was due to their negligence that made them uh, suffer this accident. So, according to the police commander, because of that accident, and for the number of people who we claim or who we are feared dead, is due to that. That they got to arrest him. So, as things now, this gentleman is in custody. I mean, who is he? He was arrested yesterday, but this morning, after I spoke to the commander around 8 30, that we, he said he's been granted bail and he's assisting the police for an investigation. Okay. 
Uh, let's look at the numbers. Yesterday we, to we were told that uh, about 16 bodies in total had been recovered. Uh, do we have any updates as far as the numbers are concerned as well? Yeah, you know, yesterday was exactly three days when the incident happened. And Indeed. according to experts and also uh, what I've also witnessed, uh, the bodies have started going back. In fact, the last one they brought yesterday, making the normal system went bad. And in fact, the order coming uh, around is, is becoming unbearable. Therefore, uh, the MP for the area, Honorable Dr. Kwabana Donko, together with some of the opinion leaders, agreed that uh, at least the police and some of the security agencies who are assisting the search should allow individuals who find any of the bodies to bury them, but rather they have to communicate to the authorities that they have found this number of people, and for that matter, they wanted to seek permission so that they can bury them wherever they are being found. In that, for that matter, they have to send the number they found at any village at all. So these communities have gone around to the nearby villages who are close to the scene so that they can at least be given the chance to bury, but rather give out the number they have buried so far. Okay, so, so if I understand you correctly, it, it, it suggests that, well, we could have a lot more increase in that numbers, but as things stand out, we can't uh, readily put out those figures because the directive is that once you find the body, you can go ahead and bury it. Is that the case? Yes, please. Yes, please. Because those bodies cannot be bring to the town. They can't bring it to the town because they started going bad. They, 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 in fact, the other coming out of it and looking at the health implications that it goes with, they have to make sure they allow them to bury them, then communicate with the authorities the normal they have buried. So we are yet to gather the facts as to how many have been buried so far. Okay, right. Dan Tessi, many thanks for that update. And that was the local reporter at CAG who joined us with updates on uh, that boat that capsized leading to the death of uh, the death of some 16 people we are told well the information now suggests that a lot more people uh, a lot more bodies may have been recovered but uh, because of a new directive that suggests that once you do have the once the bodies are recovered you can go ahead and bury them uh, we, we are unable to give you the exact figure once we get that we'll bring that to you but let's try and get some more updates from the police also and uh, joining me now on phone is uh, ASP. Okay, DSP uh, Beneza, I, I believe, uh, who's joining us with those updates. Uh, DSP Abraham Bansa, uh, good morning. Many thanks for joining us here on News Yeah, good morning. So uh, we just spoke to uh, a correspondent on the ground who tells us that the owner of this boat has been arrested and is currently assisting in investigations. I mean, what has he been telling you so far? Uh, he was uh, arrested. The fact the operator was arrested with the two days today, and then the other two was also arrested yesterday. Yes, but as of now, uh, we have uh, questioned them, and then uh, we are preparing a different docket to send to the agency office for advice. And uh, what, what what really is the crime of the boat owner? I mean, you are saying you've arrested the operator, and now the boat owner. Uh, what did yes. the boat owner do? Yes, uh, you know the the when we were putting uh, this uh, uh, adoko this boat, uh, the, the the operator wasn't there. Uh, you have to have a lance, but the operator wasn't lancing. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So we, that's what I'm saying. That this is a provincial charge anyway. And, and you said these provincial charges are what? It's a provincial charge. Provincial charge. Provincial charge. Yes. We gave him a provincial charge. That's what I'm saying. That. Uh, we have we are preparing the duplicate docket to be sent to the attorney general's office for advice. Okay, so yes. uh, when are you likely to finish with that docket, and then maybe you can move on and process these yes, before uh, court? Yes, we just started, so that's when we will finish. Say by close of week. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, 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 is the police looking at uh, arresting any more people? No, no, no. no. Apart from uh, these uh, two people, uh, I don't think you arrest anybody again. Okay. The recovery efforts, maybe you could give us an update on the official statistics we are getting now. Uh, as of yesterday, the information we had was that uh, we had 16 bodies that had been recovered. Uh, as we, no, it's, the information, it's, 15, it's, it's 15 rather, 15. Not 1, 15. 5, 15. 1, 5, yes. That's the official number? Yes, 1, 5. That's the official number. Okay. But there, there remains a possibility that a lot more bodies may have been recovered between yesterday and now, no, seeing that... Yeah, uh, like they have not found any, 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 anybody again. Mm. So, so that's it? Do you hear me? Hello? 
Yes, I'm listening to you, sir. So you're saying yeah, uh, there isn't any possibility that... Have that the, any, anybody again today. Okay. Okay. Right. Anyway. Apart from the 15, yes. Okay. DSP Brown Bansa, many thanks for your time here on News Desk. And uh, DSP Brown Bansa is with the YG Police. He just gave us an update on the situation. There. Well, he tells us that the official figure stands at 15, the number of bodies that have perished in this boat disaster. We'll be bringing a lot more on this in subsequent bulletins. Do stay with us here on Joy News. Away from that to the Ashanti region. And Police Commander for the Ashanti region, DCOP Kofi Boachi, has warned the police will not tolerate any more disturbances at Crowfoam a suburb of the regional capital. Now, the warning comes after residents of the town hit the streets to protest an autopsy report which exonerates police officers accused of brutalizing a male resident of the town to death. The report suggested the 22-year-old shoe dealer died of natural causes, but the residents say what is that particular uh, case is highly improbable. <laughs> The regional commander, however, dismissed the claims that the reports had been manipulated to show the officers involved. This year, Pikofi Boache vowed his men would deal ruthlessly with any group which decides to foment trouble in the town. He spoke with the Ministry of Firms or him interior. It's, it's rather, it's laughable and it's rather unfortunate any well-meaning person can make that unfortunate allusion, especially when somebody like Dr. Osei Sampene is concerned. And the question is, what do I even personally gain from in conniving with a doctor or a pathologist to either juice the report or change the report in favor of who? I think anybody thinking like that is quite, uh, I can't say unscrupulous, but it's not a right thinking person. The point of the fact is that people die from different ailments. And if you look at the coroner's report, they say the guy has what is called the ventricular cardiac dilation, enlargement of the heart, and also congestive heart failure. These are normal things that even happen to footballers. So it's quite unfortunate anybody would think that police will connive with, to gain what? And I will advise those who are following that line, especially the youth in growth room, that they should desist from any acts that may lead to further casualties because the police are not going to sit down for them to take the law into their own hands, uh, block the streets, and do other violent acts. I know for a fact that because of this unfortunate incident, there are some unscrupulous interest groups who are instigating them. Some are even journalists trying to make the illusion that police has connived with people without any sensible foundation. So all that I will say is that we express our condolence to the family. We will continue to sympathize with them, but we shall not. We are not going to tolerate any act of violence or indiscipline in the name of this death. Police are going to act swiftly, forcefully, and without any shed of fear in dealing with this growth room issue. And I think this afternoon will be the last time, the last time that anybody will come on the road. Because if you come on the road, we are going to use any force at our disposal to let people know that discipline will prevail in this Ashanti region. Those instigators must lead the demonstration so that they come and meet the police face to face. And we tell them that we are the only legitimate group which can use force sensibly in bringing law and order. And that brings into mind what happens to the five officers who were detained as a result of this incident? Um, they have been just built, been built this afternoon. And you, people shouldn't forget that this autopsy report is part of the docket. 
In addition to other witness statements that have been taken, it will be sent to the Attorney General for the necessary advice. But as to the fact that the person was brutalized by police and that caused the death, it has been discounted right away by this autopsy report because the family was there and they did physical inspection of the body before it was opened. Okay. And there was nothing, absolutely nothing, to indicate that the disease was brutalized. And that's what you sink into the head of the hoodlums who are trying to take advantage of this to cause mayhem in the city. And I must repeat, any act of indiscipline will be met with the necessary force. And I hope when the time comes, human rights activists will not complain. And that's the Ashanti Regional Police Commander, DCOP Kofi Boachi, speaking to Insure FM's Oheming Terrier. They will be going to call from this morning also to bring you an update on the situation there. But let's put that on hold for now and talk about a story we brought to you on Tuesday where we told you that there was a story about a pest invasion at Okwenya and Somanya in the eastern region. Army worms have destroyed large acres of maize farms in the area. Let's first take a listen to concerns raised by some of these farmers whose farms uh, have been uh, invaded by these pests. Uh, when the uh, mist was coming up, then they start chopping the leaves and then going to the center of it, it retired the growth. So after the race setting seriously, about, let's say about half of the uh, farm is able to survive. Mm. Mm. And you cannot see those who cannot, those which cannot go on, are those short ones. Mm -hmm. They are unable to grow. They are unable to grow. So That's retired the growth entirely. Me, what, how long will it take for a normal maize to shoot up and, you know, you get the, the corn from it? How long will it take for it to grow? And, I mean, uh, comparing it to, you sorry. know, what has happened now? Uh, normally, between six to eight weeks, you must get it. Six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks. It will be fully grown. Fully grown. Uh, that about. Let's take it. Must be, let's take it about three months. Three months. Yes, about three months. It should be. Then it should it should fully grown, dry. Start harvesting. So that we start harvesting it. So what do we see here? How long have this been here? This about two and a half months. Two and a half months. Two and a half months. So, even so that by now, mm. I should have even get maize from the farm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So after seeing this one, then I decided to take a step. Because I don't know whether the spray of these chemicals and so on will be able to, I mean, curtail the insects. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do the second phase. The second phase to which I started, and that is about five weeks now. It has attacked it, but not as severe as this. And now I have one which is about a week old, and then the others shooting. They not has attacked them yet. Well, this will compel me to go to the market. Well, so you just heard from one of the farmers there whose uh, farmlands have been invaded by these uh, army worms. Let's try and uh, find out from your Greek, Municipal Agric Director, Daniel Odro. Uh, who's joining us now on phone with some thoughts on this and what really uh, they are doing about the situation. We've been in touch with the ministry and they've redirected us to the uh, municipal agri director. So Daniel Odro is joining me now on phone with those details. So Mr. Odro, uh, good morning. Many thanks for joining us. Your news there, sir. Good morning. So I'm told you are visiting some, some of the affected farms this morning. Uh, is that to suggest that you were not aware of this pest invasion? Oh, it's not that I'm not aware. Uh, it has been reported by the farmers, but we need to assess the one that you just said that it is an army worm because uh, the pests keep on changing or they keep on reporting of pest, pest, pest. And we cannot just come out and say that it's an army worm. But unfortunately for this one, this is the old one that we, we earlier identified. It is not an army worm. It is a, a stage of a, a moth, a caterpillar. That destroys the maize. And it's not even on maize. It destroy other crops as well. But you do routine checks yourself? Yes, we've done it. We even 
gone beyond the district. We went to part of the water region in Togome, Manya, Isidamai, and even my district in Yilo. And it's like the same of that the capital the the caterpillar that they reported is what we've identified. Okay, so you do not know of this particular situation. You think it's a peculiar one? It's not one that yes. is affecting all farmers there, but something else is what is affecting other farmers in the area? Yes. This one is a, is a peculiar type, uh, kind of moth or caterpillar that we've encountered this time of the season. Normally, we don't normally have this thing, but... The damage is so extensive that in some areas, some of the farmers have to cut down their maize. By the, the setting of the rains, they started planting, and some in, on some of the farms, they are still on it. Mm. So we've advised them to report to the office. At the end of the day, we have to go and assess it. If it's the same type of caterpillar that we've reported, then we'll give them the necessary recommendation to... Oh, so, so is that to suggest you are, you are not making the rounds? I, I thought earlier you said you were making some rounds this morning. No, we've gone round because we've gone round to most of the farms. Okay, and, and, and what have you use. found so far? No, what we found so far is the old one that the farmers have been reporting because the, the news came as army worm, and we need to go around and check if it is really an army worm. Mm. But unfortunately, it wasn't an army worm. It is the old caterpillar moth that have been uh, on the farm. So w what is to happen now? I mean, th this is what you, you say you've gathered so far what is to happen uh, already we are complaining that uh, <laughs> the food stuff we are getting now seem to have uh, gone on a bit of a low side uh, there's been a decline in yeah, our production true, so true. what is being done true. about it true uh, this this uh, damage is not only centered on yellow area we've done survey and it's through the water region the part of eating uh, so it's now becoming an national distance so how we are now handling it uh, we wanted to see if we can handle it as a national decision. So, I'm listening to you, sir. We, we reported it to the DPA, that is Plant Protection Regulatory Department of the Ministry. They were there, they took sample of the, uh, the, the caterpillar, and we are, in a way, trying to find ways to get them a chemical that can control it. But fortunately, too, for us, we were able to get them that they can use, and it was very effective. Very effective. That is the eco pair. Um, uh, it's bio, uh, a bio insecticide. But to the surprise of most of our distance, the farmers are saying it's expensive. It's expensive. So we are now trying to see if we can get support from the assembly to see if they can help the farmers to purchase or to purchase the chemical and supply it to the farmers. So uh, as things stand now, technically nothing can be done to help these farmers? Technically nothing can be done because at pests affect different stages of the, the maize crop. Mm. Even a week after germinating, you see the pest on it. And it will stay on it until it tassel. And if you are not able to control it, it will destroy it before it even tassel. And, the, and defoliate almost all the leaves. You see patches of destruction on the leaves. And eventually it affects photosynthesis and the yield will also to decrease. I see. So now farmers in this area can only hope and pray that something miraculously happens and their crops are saved. <laughs> Fortunately, we have, we have chemicals. So when they come to the office or when we visit them, we recommend that they should go in for the chemical spray. And they we need to pay for these chemicals you speak of? That's where we can. Ours end. It's nothing that you can open the chemical for the farmer. First, in some cases, the destruction is priced up. Uh, if he can't, then he has to leave the thing to the medical Okay, right. Mr. Odro, many thanks for your time on News Desk this morning. I uh, really do appreciate your time. And Daniel Odro is the Yilo Krobo Municipal Agri Director. He joined us on phone with uh, some more on that very worrying situation there uh, at Somanya and other adjoining towns there. And we do know that quite a number of farms there have been destroyed uh, after an invasion of army worms. Well, what he tells us that is that uh, they've gone around and they haven't seen the problem to be an invasion of army worms. They, they say it's uh, caterpillars that have 
invaded most of these farms, but <laughs> there isn't much they can do now. Farmers, they need to hope and pray that uh, something happens, something miraculous happens and their crop yields are saved. Uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll be following up on that as well and we'll bring you a lot more a bit later on. But do stay on. Time for a break, though. But we do have some updates that, that are coming in now, some information we are gathering as far as uh, the strike by JUSAC is concerned. We are trying to confirm that as soon as we have that, we'll bring that to you uh, after this break. Stay on. <laughs> 